Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we're going to make some Travis Scott melodies. You guys will get all the project files for free. And uh, let's get started. Some on my profit six this is what it sounds like. I'm using the MIDI out. So if you're a fellow like hardware user like me and you're using the profit six for some reason, make sure on your MIDI out, you click this drop down and turn off send pitch range, turn that off, because if you turn it on, every time you mess with the pitch knobs on your synth, it will keep resetting to this like weird high pitch thing. See how we changed it? And then if I hit play again, it brings that tone back. So if you turn that option off, it won't keep doing that. Okay, so that's something I had to learn recently. Um, okay, so now that we have that, the MIDI's going out of FL into the hardware. First chord you want to look at is an F minor chord. I teach this in chord codes at busyworksbeats.com slash music theory essentials. Here we have the root note or F and we're going to count up three. And so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's zero, three, seven. Add those notes together. You always get the minor chord all the time. We're going to take our bass note, pull it down an octave and copy it twice. Now, for the next chord, we're simply going to take what's called the minor third and pull it down one half step. So now this creates what's called a suspended second chord. So there's only one note changing from here to here. Okay, so now we have that. To create change ups, what we could do instead of changing the top chord, let's change the bottom bass. Okay, so the easiest notes to use are your tonic for the bass and your perfect fifth. The perfect fifth is when you take your bottom note or your tonic note, you count up seven notes. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That creates the perfect fifth. You can use that as the bass as well. So we have the tonic, the root note, and then we also have what's called the perfect fifth. These are great for, you know, creating bass lines. Okay, so now we have that. And um, I created a small change up. I had to redo the video, so I forgot my exact thesis behind this. But in short, I wanted to change the bass. In changing the bass, I had to change the chord type up top. So I just revoiced it so that G sharp's on top and that we played C sharp to match in the top chord there. OK, so also the synth is sending velocity information. I don't want that right now. Let's go back. Okay, so what I'll do as this is recording is mess with the parameters as I'm playing, as it's playing through. Okay, so I'm going to record that. Here's how I do it. Let's go to song mode. We're going to add this in. Now, melody comes in four layers. You have the top line section, which is the most memorable melody. You have the harmony section, which is like the chords we just played. And then you have the contrast layer, which is your bass line. So usually, again, the root note. Okay, so the contrast is usually a bass. But the goal of the contrast layer is to simply counteract the top line to be different. And the rhythm section is anything we play rhythmically. Okay, so when we get there, we'll get there. But those are the four layers of melody. So now let's re what was I gonna do? Let's record this. And I'm going to twist knobs as it records to create a really unique sound. So now we have that unique sound. It moves over time, so it catches the ear. So those small little changes means we don't have to keep adding a thousand things to make the beat sound interesting. So 
So right there, I did. one thing about the synth, you have to move the knob before you move the knob so that it doesn't just do a crazy reset. So luckily it didn't sound too jarring, but there was a point where I turned, turned a certain knob for the stereo width and it reset its value. So that's luckily it's not super obvious. Okay. So now that we have the harmony section, let's start adding these other sections here. I'm going to mute the MIDI so it doesn't trigger twice. And let's go to a new pattern. And let's add our top line. Now the top line, let me, let me try to do this all on one screen. Let's try to do it. But if it gets too complicated, we're not going to do it this way. Let's go to piano roll. The top line for me is usually one octave higher than the highest note of your chord. So if your highest note of your chord is C, we're going to go up at least to C because it helps the ear distinguish the top line from uh, the, the harmony section. Okay, so that's why I usually keep the melody at least one octave higher than the highest note of the chord. Not a hard rule. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm, my thesis behind it. Okay, so now I can pick a different sound. Okay, so let's just start with the core sound and then we can always sound design. So I'm going to speak a little music theory in ease here because I have a new course called Melody Mastery and I explain all this stuff in the course. Something's called a neighbor tone. So let's add a neighbor tone in here. Now melody, everybody tries to create melody without understanding how chords work. And that's the reason why you guys get stuck with melody is because you're not acknowledging how important chords are to melody. So melody needs context and that's what chords are for. It creates the mood and the context for your, your top line. Now, normally I like to play a top line, so it might be easier to play it only because I just like to be expressive. But the thing is, if we want to change stuff and do all this stuff while we're doing it, then we, we need to program the MIDI and do it. But I think I have ideas. So let me play it by hand. It's just faster for me. I just thought of something actually I could use my controller as a MIDI in forgot I could do that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is record what I'm doing in the audio. So let's record this. You guys, again, we'll get all the project files for free. Let's record this. Boom. So we're recording a top line. I'm going to mute my mic because it's kind of loud. And uh, basically we're just going up the scale. Glissando style. And just going back glissando. Here's what the notes look like. So I'm just going up the scale, just notes in the scale, just going up. So I'm playing them really quickly. So it's just three note slides. Now I'm 
it's going to shape the tone. So I added delay and a little reverb to um, spice it up a little bit. All right, so don't worry about perfect like delay the super time synced. Let's record this. So now I'm recording the audio of the MIDI that we just created. All right, so let me show you guys something. So if you have these little tails, these are little tools you guys can use. Let's slice this. We're going to make it unique as a sample. We're going to reverse this. Double click, reverse. So now it's just this. It's like a sample, like a sound effect, I should say. And we're going to use this to lead into the beginning of the melody. This could be a little bit better. So let's make this two tracks. So let's say, let's do it this way. All right, we're going to copy this over. So what we're going to do with this top line is figure out, okay, let's go to snap to grid. Let's go to like a half beat just so we could line it up better. And let's hit alt. So now I'm combining these, make it like this, create a crossfade, like a subtle little crossfade. So it goes, and then it starts. Little details like that can make your melodies a little more cool. So that's the top line. That's going to be the, you know, the thing that people remember the most. Okay, now we have that. So now we've created a top line. Let's mute this MIDI. So now we need a contrast layer, aka a bass layer, and then the rhythm section. Let's let the beat build with the harmony and then move into the top line coming in. And what we could do too in FL is lower what's called the clip gain. So now we could just turn that down. So now the top line has more room. But I, I like the energy of the harmony. It's not in the way. And right, now let's find a contrast sound, a bass sound. That's my fault, y'all. I keep forgetting that this thing is a MIDI controller, so that's my bad. Um, okay, so we need to go to new pattern. So for the bass, we're going to use the tonic note, the perfect fifth. I teach this all in melody mastery. I just don't have time to like break it all the way down to the science, but we're going to use the tonic note, the perfect fifth, perfect fourths. But usually I use the tonic, the perfect fifth, the octave and like a sharp uh, root note. So that would be F, C, like that. Okay, so let's turn this off. So let me dial in the sound real quick.
All right, so those harmonies get a little bright, harmonically speaking. So let's just record where there's no harmony. All right, so I'm recording like different ideas here. Keep forgetting that I have my mic on. Let me turn it off so you guys don't hear clunking. I bet y'all keep forgetting that this thing is a MIDI. All right, so let's record this into the MIDI out. My bad. Again, you guys get the project files for free at busyworksbeats.com slash FL Studio. Again, what I'm playing is just the tonic note, the perfect fifth, and the octave. And then the half step from the tonic. All right, so that's what I'm playing here. Try to add little like accent tones. Now let's add the rhythm here. I think we're done with that bass sound. Let's turn the harmonies down here. It might be too bright. I like the bass kind of standing out by itself. So this is the cool part about understanding how melodies are four parts because now we can kind of take stuff away, pull stuff back in, and it feels more, uh, you know, there's more variety as opposed to just the same thing happening over and over and over again. Okay, so we can... You know, the track can move on without the harmony, which is good. Now let's add a rhythm section somewhere in here. Okay, so now we need something that contrasts all this like heavy harmonic stuff. So a short plucky type sound would go great for this because it won't just kind of get lost in the sauce. Thank you. 
Said like this Kanye type alarm sound. I'm adding a bunch of reverb so it fits in the background. So again, I'm using a simple technique, octaves and perfect fifths to kind of jump around these pitches like this. All right, what we're gonna do is move the MIDI to the bottom, mute that boy, add another layer, call it rhythm, and then bring this down. So this is more of a, like a sound effect rhythm, but again, you could stack rhythms, whether they're drums, synth sounds, and that's the best part about these four sections is you guys can stack infinitely, as long as it lines up. Let me see if I can find more rhythmic sounds here. So I created the sound using some frequency modulation. It sounds pretty dope. I'm just gonna play the root note rhythmically. So this doesn't have necessarily a direct tone, but it has a rhythm to it. All right, cool part about recording the MIDI here, this is where MIDI would be more important because I can quantize the MIDI instead of playing it by hand. With all these like time flaws, we can hit Alt Q and then quantize it to the grid. So that way it triggers on time. Even if it's delayed a little bit from just latency in general, we can still 
make it very rhythmic. All right, so here's an issue I have here. We're going to go to edit, discard, note lengths, and we're going to highlight all the notes. Control A, hit Alt, left click, and then make these smaller. This does matter, the note length. So a lot of this is like super not on the grid. So let's go to snap to grid. Let's hit control Q for a quarter beat. It's kind of difficult. I guess I played it fast. This one's a little difficult because it's brassy. So you have to play the notes a little bit longer so you can't just quantize it. It doesn't sound on beat. Anyhow, I'm going to redo that. This one's difficult, so I gotta really like play it by hand. So that was a little more difficult than I expected, mainly because it's not your typical um, running the mill synth sound. So that was that was a lot going on. So, so that was more of a sound designer's dilemma there. So I'm going to use it sparingly because I don't want those sound effects to get too boring over time. So let's spread them out like eight bars, technically four bars at 140. Let's hear this whole composition so far.
why does FL do this? So like every time I go to record, it keeps going back to audio. Like goodness gracious, leave it alone. I'm trying to record MIDI and it keeps going back, y'all. Dang, my camera froze. <laughs> FL be doing too much. It's like nobody told it to switch the audio. All right, anyhow, let's go back. Do this again. So I'm I'm using this like this freak. There's a modulation on the frequency. So it's creating these cool overtones. I'm going to add that in as like a transition sound. I was adding those little ear candy things. So the main lesson here is just allow randomness, meaning randomness in tuning and different things. But to me, that's a rhythm that we just added. Rhythm, okay. Some would consider it a top line. It's really a combination of a top line and a rhythm because it's a super high pitch sound. I'm now using that same sound drowned out with delay and reverb to make it sound bigger without the frequency. We could technically do that. So. You can barely hear it. So it's still doing its. Here's what the effects though. So we can kind of smear the effect. It's more of a background texture, really. I feel like I want to redo the bass, but we'll see if I forgot what patch it was.
I might redo the top line. I'm going to figure out which element is making the beat feel a little off. I think it's the top line. Yeah, it's that top line. So I'm going to go back and redo the top line. I forgot what we even, how it started or how we even made the patch, but. All right, so it was just a little off in time. That was throwing off the whole vibe for the beat. So let's find a sound that could be the top line sound. I found the pet. Let's re record this. Right now, let's just find stuff to be expressive on the uh, melody. So this can also be our rhythm section. I'm recording from the court chronos now. I'll just keep recording all the way through and then whatever we keep is what we keep.
I was trying to think too much and it messed me up. So anyhow, we're going to take the beginning and then use the ending of something. I'm also see if we could add some more like real instruments in here. I think we're going to be an hour on this video. It's got to practice chords.
Uh, let's try one more technique. Firstly, let's hit save, control, shift, save as a new project, just in case, control, N is save as a new project. Let's go to tools. We're gonna go to macros, switch all audio clips to stretch mode, hit okay. Basically, it just locks everything to the grid. Now let's go to tools, macros, switch all audio clips to resample mode. You have to do this only for audio that you recorded at the same tempo. It gets a little complex, but now that we're at 140, uh, we're gonna lower the BPM and now it will change the tone of the sample, the actual tuning of the sample. So for darker tunes, you could go up if you want for brighter. So let's mess with different tempos. And again, you guys will get the project files for free at busyworksbeats.com slash FL Studio. Kind of like the sound of the higher BPM. Let's try a slower BPM. I like the vibe of 157. I like the the resonance with 120. So I like that tone. It might be a little slow for Travis Scott. So maybe 135 would be kind of like a medi like a, uh, what do you call it? Middle ground. Or 130. Keep in mind, we're changing the key when we change the BPM. This one doesn't resonate as much. So 120 and 157 were the sounds I like.
The tricky part is that the harmony also has that bass layer, so they're kind of fighting when the bass comes in, but there's also some note clashes. So in that case, you could thin it out with a high pass filter to be technical, but we're just gonna let them overlay the sounds. Here's one thing we could do because I like both sounds, but I don't want to super high pass filter the first sound and then make it super thin. So what we'll do is we'll side chain. So let's go to our base, right click side chain to this track. We're going to open up Fab Filter Pro Q3. This is one of many ways you guys could do this. Okay, we're going to just target the zone where they're going to overlap in the base. Usually 100 hertz and below. Let's just create like a low shelf here. And we're going to make this dynamic by pulling this down let's do like 6 db we're going to put the mode on auto mode hit this little button here to turn on the side chain let's go to the settings and let's go to processing tab right click select your base as the input and now every time the base hits it will turn down the volume of this chord in this specific zone so i'm going to sweep the frequencies to find the best spot but i'm pretty sure it's just those sub frequencies So now they can both play without clashing. I'm going to add stuff on the master chain for the last little vibe.
All right, so that is the process. So in the next videos, I'll move a little bit quicker. Now you guys have the technique on how to do it. Thank you guys for watching. For the free project files, go to busyworksbeats.com slash FL Studio. Subscribe if you're new. Share with a friend. Peace out, guys.